most yes, memorable moments did. from 2017. <laughs> did, did. Right, Mike Garofolo? Well, absolutely. <laughs> you guys did. This was one of them. Marquise Goodwin's 83-yard touchdown against the Giants after losing his son hours earlier. That was one of the most most emotional things I had seen all season. Yeah, Philly fans about to get emotional talking about Carson Wentz here. This one, yeah. Hey, Carson Wentz's Houdini act. That was a great one. Remember when? The good yeah, old days. I know. Mike Zimmer's ears. He checks in. The result of touchdown celebration, or the return of touchdown Wrong, celebrations. I have no they idea. Were creative. They That's, made I think so. Smile. I think we all do. I think it's his eyes no! that have the problem. <laughs> I'm just <saying. laughs> Joe's been great against the Blitz this year. Yeah! What happened on that? Did you get your vision yet? I, uh, I couldn't see him initially. That's what I thought. Hey, hey, you got to finish every catch, man. What up and getting it is Danny Woodhead, and that's a first down. Good job, Danny Woodhead. Wow, what a catch. Woo! Flacco rolls the throw, complete, tight end, touchdown, Max Williams! Touchdown! Woo! Good job, Joe! Way to get it done, we need that score right there. Throws, incomplete! It is a very happy holiday in Baltimore. Joe, way to fight. Hey, you know, I was nervous on that oh, side. Are you kidding me? You gotta stop. Big saying. win for the Ravens last week, but now it's all about the wild card. There's Tom Palacero in Baltimore and Stacey Dales live in Nashville. The two AFC teams that can get in with a win, the Ravens and the Titans. Tom, I'm going to start with you with the Ravens and their game against the Bengals tomorrow. This is Joe Flacco's time of the year right now. Colleen, I can barely hear you over the guy on the tractor <laughs> blowing ice off the tarp to my right. I just got a nice blast through here. The good news is the snow has stopped. The bad news is it's still going to be pretty chilly for this game between the Ravens and the Bengals tomorrow. The kickoff time got pushed back to 425 p.m. Temperatures expected to be in the low to mid-20s. And the sun is going to be down probably in the first quarter, so might feel even colder than that. I spoke to Ravens quarterback Joe Flacco. Asked him, do you like playing in this? type of cold? Flacco said not really, but it is what it is. The Ravens have overcome a lot more than the elements to get to this point. All the injuries that they had before camp. Of course, Flacco missing the entire preseason because of his back. They survived until their bye. Got healthy. Safety Eric Weddle told me, we knew we were going to have to win six out of seven down the stretch to get into the postseason. They've won five so far. It is winning in against the Bengals. The Ravens still can get in even if they lose with a little bit of help. Weddle said, we are one game away from fulfilling that goal and getting in the dance. If we do that, who knows what can happen? Let's go to Stacey Dales in warm Nashville. <laughs> it is warm, actually, Tom. It's about 35 degrees, but the real feel is about 45 degrees. Of course, the, the feel last night, there was a bowl game. They're heating it. It'll be ready to go for kickoff. But for these Tennessee Titans, they have to win. They've lost three in a row. And this is their first playoff game, ostensibly. And talking to center Ben Jones with this team, he said the playoffs start for us this week. If they win, they are into the playoffs. And for the Jacksonville Jaguars, we know they're in. They're the three seed at this stage, but they're coming off a loss. This team is 4-0 after a loss. And in talking to defensive end Calais Campbell, who might be the leading candidate for defensive player of the year with his 14 and a half sacks, among other things, he has been special. This defense has been special. They want to go into the playoffs with momentum. And most important, Colleen, as I get ready to throw it back to you, they in facing this this Tennessee team do not want to have to see them again and, and if Tennessee wins this game it's very likely they could see him next weekend in the wild card game so that is f foremost in their minds entering tomorrow yeah two weeks in a row no good but Stacy I mean right now in Nashville that must feel like an island compared to where you're <laughs> living in Chicago it's Chiberia there right now I've seen how awful the temperatures are there Chiberia, Chiberia? that's a thing right Stacy yeah Totally, totally. So, like, I left Chicago yesterday, guys, and it was about 10 degrees, um, you know, a real feel of about 10 degrees. Mm. The Titans all week, so they're texting me, you know, Titans a staff, like, Stacey, it's going to be super cold in, in Nashville. You want to bring layers. And, you know, I cover games in Green Bay and Minnesota, you know, living in Chicago often. And right now, I feel like 
I'm overheated. Like, seriously, guys. Like, I, I, well, I, the both I, I, of you, I, you and Pelissero, we're, so talk, warm here, we're talking I about how, how cold it is in, in Baltimore for Pelissero. He's from Minneapolis. What does that say right negative there? 14. Oh, negative, negative 14. Negative 14 in Minneapolis. <laughs> there he is. Well, Tom, okay, you Tom. choose to live there in Minneapolis, so you, you deal with this you stuff. You choose to live regular. there. A lot I mean, of people yeah, choose to live there. <laughs> it's a nice place in, in the summer and in the spring. It's just, minus, that's not a wind chill. That's a temperature, Tom. <laughs> You Mike, I know you are excited for Super Bowl week. It's yeah, 35 thrilled. below wind chill right now in Minneapolis. <laughs> One month away, baby. Bring out the swimsuits. I'm going to have to get tips from both of you guys on what to bring because I am right now completely unprepared for Super Bowl weather in Minneapolis. Yeah, me too. We're some I'm people. sweating. I'm, Thank I'm you sweating. both. I know. Uh, Stacy, go cool off somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so let's unpack this game a little bit more. They have more. those doors in the stadium that open. I don't think they're going to be opening yeah. this game. Oh, that's true. I have feeling about it. In Minnesota. So the Jags, they're locked right now into the three seed. They um, they do have a lot to play for, though, because they don't want to face the Titans again after last week. And the Jags, what happened to them the week before against the 49ers, they kind of laid an egg in San Francisco, Steve. Yeah, they did. This, this defense for the Jaguars, it's the backbone of this team. And so when they did not uh, perform well or if they have a slow start, or have some errors in the passing game. I mean, this offense just struggles because they have utilized the free agency and and the draft to build up this defense first. I'm listening to you, but I'm really just staring at your 2018 glasses. Okay, that's cool. I, yeah. <laughs> so, but they, you know, when they've had a slow start, you got the Rams game, the uh, Cardinals game, and then as of late, the 49ers game. I'm looking at this game this week to see if they are going to show us the momentum need going into the playoffs, if they're going to ratchet, ratchet up or mm -hmm. take a notch up to show all these other teams where we're seated and where we are, we're for real. So I'm looking at this game to see how well they play. You hit it. You hit it right on. I mean, interrupt you, Jeezy, no, you but uh, the, you talk about slow starts and with this defense and uh -huh. things like that. Uh, through the first 15 weeks of the season, they only averaged giving up two and a half points. Two and a half points average given up in the first quarter of the games. Last week, 10 points. They only averaged less than 50 yards given up. Right? Last week, over 157 yards given up in the first quarter. And I say all this to say uh, they got out of balance. Mm -hmm. Right? If the defense isn't showing up, that means you're going to only have 23 rushing attempts between the two running backs, which means Blake Bortles is going to have to throw the ball 50 times oh, to try to no, win a game. No, you no, do not no. want no. Blake Bortles throwing the ball 50 mm -hmm. times. Yes, geez, I know where you're going. He has gotten better, but... No. He's not good enough to carry the team specifically. With I'm his not arm arguing right with you. They don't listen, want him to carry. They, they, they cannot want him to. at this desk last week. We talked about this. I was here, so we well, let me refresh my, your memory. It was just the three of us. This is called the Garofolo Jinx. A lot of times it ends in an injury. <laughs> thankfully for Blake Bortles, it did. When I speak, talk about that. Well, when I speak people's names, sometimes. But anyway, uh -huh. in this case, it ended with poor play. I sat here at this desk last week saying that he's got a better feel for scheme. Oh, yeah, I remember. No, you said that Sunday too. I did. I yep. did. I carried it over into Sunday. And then he went out and played probably his worst game in, in however but long that, it was. You got to give credit but to the 49ers as well. You do. And you also have to sit there and not and realize that it's not like this. This is not how Ascension... There's there's peaks and valleys mm -hmm. as you carry your play up. And, and that was a, a bit of a dip. So, to so, me... So you're rating him as more of a B or C stock... Yes. Than, than a triple A. Yes. Oh, I would. Yeah. I never put him in triple A. I, I know, said I'm he's, just talking. He's, you know, showing my showing that. Nathaniel Hackett, their offensive understand. coordinator, said he was a, he was a fantasy football dynamo for a lot of people Excuse because he had me? a lot of uh, garbage time points. He said, oh, but yeah. we were terrible as a team. We are yeah. now uh, I feel a lot better about his ability to. Hit. But you're right. It's got to be complimentary, complimentary football. Yeah. Football. To me, if I'm the Jaguars, and I know they they haven't really tipped their hand. They they said people are going to play. Treat it almost like that last preseason game. That last yeah. full right. preseason game. Get in. Get, feel, feel good about no. yourself. And psychologically, they need to get it together because last week they were falling apart. Yeah, because they were they knew bickering they on had the sidelines. Because yeah. they knew they made the playoffs this before is, the game started. This, right, I mean, exactly. You know what I mean? 20 seconds. This is a young 20 team. 20 seconds. And you cannot say preseason compared to preseason media guy. Former player Ooh. to playoffs. That's how you it's receive. not. It's not a difference. It's, it, it, it's totally receive. different. <laughs> you have to raise your level of play in the playoffs. Legacy. I said almost are built. like almost as it, in like you get in. No. you do some things good. You no. leave with a lead. Mm -mm. You put your guys on ice. No, why not? Absolutely not. The, We're going to continue into the this. Playoffs, 
You need to right, understand. We're blowing up the D block, what, which is the next block, because we're going to talk about. We got to get to Patrick Blavon. He's got headlines. We're going to we're going to talk amongst ourselves gotcha. still, but we need I to get the people I, the news that they need. Three Patrick, so. don't bring me in. I know you're standing by, <laughs> waiting, wait, ready to go. I love that tie. What's up? Oh, it's it's not my tie. I stole this from.